good afternoon. So I've had a little idea. I'm not sure whether it's something that people will be interested in or not. But during my quitting quasi journey, which I started in July 2019, I journaled. I journaled a lot. And I actually ended up writing like nearly 80,000 words in this word document. Um, journaling the ups, the downs, my thoughts, my feelings, what was going on, just everything, to be honest. Um, and I thought maybe it might be something that's helpful. I'm not sure. I'm going to pick a random day and I, I figured I might as well just start with the last one that I wrote, which was on Wednesday, the 29th of April. And this would be 2020. So last year. Um, yeah. So I figured what I'm going to do is just read it and then, yeah, I haven't actually read it since I wrote it. So it's going to be really interesting me reading it and seeing what I said. Um, yeah. So here goes. Wednesday, the 29th of April. So it's been a little while since I last journaled. And frankly, that's because life has been pretty darn mental. So what's happened, you say? Well, let me think. Firstly, the UK is currently in its sixth week of lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and I've been partially redeployed at work as part of the pandemic response unit. Due to this, I've not seen any of my friends or family for over six weeks, nor have I spent any time in the great outdoors doing the many things I love the most, including rock climbing, hiking and picnicking. Instead, I've completed the, my This Is Me journal version two, become a board game fanatic, tried to grow a flower I found in a packet of rocket <laughs> i remember that watch several new tv series on netflix oh and move house yeah moved house not something i would recommend mid-pandemic but hey such is life and that's true i would not recommend that now it's no surprise that the last one on that list has caused some degree of stress who'd have guessed it i felt utterly overwhelmed totally out of control and emotionally all over the place but despite all these emotions i coped Andrew and I managed to get everything sorted within three days and this Saturday, just gone, we moved into a lovely new home which we currently have all to ourselves. It's a house share but we're the only people here at the moment, hence why it was such a quick move despite the lockdown. However, the thing that really struck me over the past week is that at no stage did I even so much as contemplate turning to restriction as a way to manage my stress or cope. Anorexia didn't, doesn't, couldn't, can't, wouldn't, won't ever solve anything. And the past few days have proven to me that I absolutely can cope no matter what. Without restriction, as a poisoned blind, as a, without restriction, as a poisoned, poison lined safety net. That makes sense. Starvation might, starving myself didn't fix my problems. Controlling my intake didn't magic away my worries. Ignoring my hunger didn't mute my reality. In place of restriction, I have turned to several other far better things to help me get through an unavoidably difficult situation. I've reached out to family, friends and colleagues for support. I've expressed my emotions. I've had hearty, tasty, comforting meals. I've looked at the bigger picture and focused on accepting the situation. I've fallen asleep wrapped in Andrew's arms and I fitted in some self-care in the form of hot baths and evening strolls. I now know without a shadow of a doubt that I don't need anorexia to cope. I don't need restriction to face stressful situations. I don't need to shrink my body to slip through life unseen. I don't need to be hungry numb to protect myself from pain. I don't need to distract myself from my reality. I don't need to control food to handle uncertainty. I'm here to face life on life's terms, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, and all the bits in between. And on that note, I can officially say that I'm ready to sign off this journal and put a full stop at the end of my feeding, finding and freeing myself journey. The last nine months have been an absolute roller coaster, one that several times I very much wished I hadn't queued up for, let alone got on. But getting out of Quasi has without doubt saved my life. I am now totally free from anorexia, and my relationship with food is so boringly normal that it's brilliant. Food is just food. I have no fears. I have no number obsessions. I have no food-related rules. 
and I have no weird eating disorder behaviours. I eat and I move on. My relationship with my body as a physical thing has changed completely. My, my anorexia was about wanting to take up less space and my recovery has been about relearning to be all that I am and to own the space that that requires. I love my body now, entirely irrespective of what it looks like, and I embrace its fluidity, imperfections and flaws. I no longer feel the need to be productive all the time. I can chill out, sleep in and do nothing all day. I don't turn to restriction or any of my old eating disorder behaviours when the shit hits the fan. I don't need to control everything any longer, with food stuff but also in life more generally. I've processed and tackled the anxiety I had about careers and jobs, something that played a huge part in my anorexia. And I can now honestly say, having made a few little alterations, that I'm excited by the work I'm doing and where it might lead. More importantly though, I've accepted that I'll never be able to plan out my whole life. And rather than dread that fact, I've instead chosen to embrace it. Each day, I'm going along, no, each day, I'm going to say yes to the things I enjoy and no to the things I don't, with an understanding that that alone will guide me to the place I want to be tomorrow and beyond. Thank you, Anorexia. You're a bitch, but you've taught me a lot, and I will always be grateful for that. I have, however, got it from here. This is me. I am free. Gosh. Wow. I'm going to leave it there.